It's hard work, but the people want their hot dogs, burgers, and bacon. And where there's demand, there's opportunity. It's time to stake your claim in the Union Stockyards. In Union Stockyards, you control one of the big five meatpacking companies of Chicago. Your goal is to run the most successful business by processing livestock into valuable meat products. You begin the game with a dollar and a low morale token. And over the course of six years, you'll transform this into a meat empire. Every year starts by adding livestock to the supply. The more valuable the livestock, the more livestock is added. Then, reveal an event for the round. These events will affect the current year and may increase the worker discontent. If the Union Spirit track ever reaches the red strike zone, all players will lose one worker for the round and add a low morale token to their supply. You'll then take turns placing your workers on the various action spots on the board. When you place a worker, immediately take the associated action. These spots allow you to buy land, pay the indicated price, and place a land ownership card on the grid. To construct a building, go to one of these spaces and choose one of the available buildings in the display. Then, pay $1 for each space on the grid that the building takes. If it's neutral land, pay it to the bank. If it's owned by another player, pay them the money. And if it's owned by you, it's free. You also gain the benefits of the newly constructed building. This building, for example, increases the value of your pork products and brand reputation. Up here, you can increase your brand reputation, either one space for free or two spaces for $2. When you cross certain thresholds on the reputation track, you gain the indicated rewards. At this space, you can establish a branch house in the different cities. Doing so will grant you an immediate benefit and may be worth points at the end of the game. Just below that, you can place your worker on one of the spaces with a livestock token on it to earn money. Look at the chart below to see where the black marker is placed. This is how much farmers are charging for their livestock. Compare this to your marker for the value of your processed goods. The difference is the amount of money that you gain. At the end of the round, the livestock prices will be adjusted according to the remaining inventory. The animals with the lowest inventory will raise their prices by $3, and the animals with the highest inventory will lower their price by $2. At the end of six rounds, you will add your money on hand to your score along with the final margins for each of the livestock types. You'll gain points if you're high enough on the brand reputation track, for your branch houses, and for each of the buildings that you've constructed. Then, you will subtract points for the morale tokens that you have, according to this chart. The player with the highest score is the winner. There's a lot to like about Union Stockyards. The layout and graphic design is superb. The player boards lay out the turn structure clearly and even break out the most complicated action, construction, to its own little section. There are clear reminders on the board about what each action does and how end of rounds are handled. It's an attention to detail that's much appreciated and makes for a smooth and snappy play. This care is also seen in the historical setting. The events add a nice bit of flavor and even taught me a thing or two about a period of history that I knew little about. The fact that you don't have to pay up front for livestock is rooted in the notion that farmers would sometimes have to wait weeks to get paid from their meat packers. And this meat processing system is definitely the star of the show. Every time you process livestock, you have so much to consider and to anticipate. First, you have to think about how much money you'll make. Is it worth waiting a few turns to increase the value of your goods in order to create higher profits? But what if the supply runs out before your turn comes back around? Then you have to consider how your consumption will affect future pricing and supply. If you continually process one type of animal, you risk farmers raising their prices to feed your incessant demand. This can wreak havoc on your future income. It's also a system that reacts differently to the number of players in the game. At lower player counts, you can strategically process the livestock in an effort to manipulate the market in your favor. You might notice that your opponent is making a killing in pork products, so you might process pork even though it's less profitable for you in the moment so that the cost of pigs goes up in the future rounds. It's this kind of in-your-face manipulation that I like to engage in. At higher player counts, there's more noise in the system. With multiple people engaging, it's hard to predict the outcome at the end of the round. While harder to plan for, it does make for a more dynamic market. Player actions can radically change your plans, which requires you to be nimble. They might take the last livestock in the supply, leaving you scrounging for money, or they might guide the livestock prices against you for future rounds. It's a more tactical experience, but still an enjoyable one. Knowing when and how to process livestock is key to growing your company and instrumental to the overall game arc. Beginning the game with a single dollar is constricting, and your first time selling meat will result in maybe two or three dollars. It can feel stifling and leave you with few options. But once you start increasing the quality of your products and selling for larger profits, the game opens up and you're less concerned with eking out every single dollar and more concerned with jockeying for position on those valuable action spots. It's a real satisfying journey that puts you in the shoes of a fledgling company. Choosing when to pivot from growing your cash on hand to the more valuable endgame scoring is a real test of your ability to read the game state. But as much as I enjoyed these elements, there are a few things that I'm less enthused about. Worker strikes are a nice nod to the abhorrent working conditions of the time, but the random nature of their occurrences means that sometimes it rarely even happens. 
And even when it does, the fact that it affects everyone equally can lead to a strange dynamic where no one wants to address the union spirit. In order to lower worker discontent, you have to use one of your actions to lower it. And since everyone equally benefits from it, the incentive is just losing one low morale token. Yes, that does mean you lose fewer points at the end of the game, which is an objectively good thing. It just feels less satisfying than some of the more fun system that the game has to offer. The warehouse building is also mired with a bunch of small details that are meant to evoke historical facts, but come off as mere distractions from the meat of the game. For example, you get bonus points for building the same color buildings next to each other, which is supposed to model the efficiencies of the actual processing plants at the time, but the points are so minor that I never felt they would make or break my chances of winning. Also, building cards have these small symbols on them, and if you match the right ones you get a specialty card, which grants more bonuses and points. These are fine little additions, but I didn't find them as interesting as interacting with the market system. Whenever I was doing an action that didn't directly tie back to the market, I just kinda wish I was doing that instead. I enjoyed my time with Union Stockyards, even if it did feel a little unfocused, which might seem strange to say for a game that plays so quickly. It's obvious that the designer has an appreciation for the historicity of the game, and it is commendable, but it sometimes means diverging from what makes the game stand out. Luckily, they are just minor detours on an otherwise enjoyable ride, and Union Stockyard hits on some clever ideas that are worth experiencing for yourself.